And we want you, we'll be back. It's Token Red Shirt again, and sitting beside me at the moment, getting everything prepared, is Professor Rex. We're about to uh, see uh, Quad City Hot Rods skating in black against uh, Montreal Roller Derby's Smash Squad in, um, I, I guess I'm going to call that orange. Let's call it orange. That's yeah, a very deep orange. I am, enjoy the color of the Smash Squad's jerseys, actually. Uh, from Montreal, you would think that it's possibly going to have a neon hue to it of some sort, but... <laughs> Um, so, uh, Quad City Hot Rods are um, a, an amalgam team made up of Kingston Derby Girls, Belleville Roller Derby, Northumberland Roller Girls, Peterborough Area Roller Derby, Ottawa Valley Roller Derby, which is my home league, and the Thousand Isle Battlefle uh, Battlefield Bettys. And you've got to favor Montreal going into this game, being as they are actually a team, rather than uh, a, a group of disparate skaters from different leagues who uh, I'm not sure if they've managed to practice together yet. Yeah, but you have to applaud some of these leagues with smaller numbers, potentially getting themselves a team together to, to send to this tournament. Because this tournament is really important, in my opinion, to the development of a lot of these skaters as they develop into uh, a career in roller derby, whether they play on a home team or they have aspirations to play on their home league's charter team or travel team. It's very important to play tournaments uh, to, to learn how to win and learn how to lose because um, you need to be able to do both well uh, to be a good competitor, in my opinion. Yeah, and some of the Ottawa skaters were actually at Beast of the East a few months ago um, and had a very tough learning experience. Um, only one of the teams made it through to the Sunday game. Um, one of the Ottawa teams lost both their games. One Ottawa team only won one. Um, uh, and so fielding uh, a lot of rookies in those teams obviously made things a lot more difficult. So, so giving our rookies an opportunity, I think, and the rookies from everywhere, an opportunity to play and to get some experience against other, other teams will surely benefit the home leagues when they return. It's true. That's where, that's where players learn new things. They learn them from playing against other teams and, and how they do stuff and, and watching watching warm-ups and, and getting experience, different experiences from referees from different areas. That helps as well because that, that does change um, from, from area to area. So it, it is something that you need to know as a roller derby player that you might go to a different area of Ontario or even in the U.S. and you'll, you'll experience a slightly different um, idea on, on the game. Okay, so as our first jam gets underway, skating for Quad City, we have 026 Mac Attack, number 10 Bone Machine, 1313 Batman Shark Girl, 1613 Waghorn, 18 Just Derbia, 2305 Catch 22, 277 Astro Glide, 37 Stitch Ripper, 4 Slamazon, 404 Megapixel, 419 Sam Squatch, 61 Ginger Rages, 66 Masiska, Seven Ginger Jacks and seven 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 El Destructo. And straight away, Slamazon did take a forearm penalty, pushing her way through the front of the pack. Uh, so the Smash Squad from Montreal is on a power jam. Number twelve, that is I roll. I wonder if that name has anything to do with the fact that she may I roll at people. Possibly, maybe not. I'm not sure. And Slamazon back on uh, Slamazon back on the ring and almost immediately the jam is called off. So very wise tactical play there I think from Smash Squad. Yeah, ten points for the Smash Squad, 10-0, uh, taking the lead on the first jam. Uh, the forearm penalty is a difficult one to see and judge sometimes from referees. It gets called often in roller derby and it's a very contested penalty on whether or not people actually form people um, but I do believe Cleveland had the right call there the jammer did push their way through the front of the pack with the forearm extended out that is a classic forearm penalty and right from the first whistle El Destructo sent to the penalty box for Quad City allowing Quiche to pick up lead jam 
for uh, Smash Grab. And right behind her, number six, six. That is Masikai, Masikai, Masika. Masika sounds about right. <laughs> I may have mispronounced it earlier. Unfortunately, I didn't. I grabbed a little quick bite to eat before before this game, so I wasn't able to talk to the coaches to find out if there's any specific um, ways to say their name. Okay, so we have uh, the only player with three seven and then a two. That would be Oglethorpe for Smash Squad. Lining up against uh, somebody for Quad City Hot Rods because I can't see them from this seat. Oh, yeah. that'll be Bone Machine. Yeah, unfortunately for the announcer's table, we are on um, possibly, you can argue, the wrong side of the track. If we were on the other side, we could see uh, what players and what jammers were lining up against each other, but we are f facing facing the pack as it's skating towards us, so unfortunately we really can't see until they come around the, the turn sometimes. And we've had a 2-1 switch as two, well, three Smash Squad players in the penalty box as El Destructo returns for Quad City and Bone Machine is on a power jam. Oglethorpe sitting out a penalty for something. Quad City with a full outside four wall sweep on this power jam. It's Interesting to see that. I haven't seen that done from many teams. So Bone Machine picking up 10 points on this jam so far as Oglethorpe comes back too. Um, I don't believe Oglethorpe's made their initial pass, so uh, perhaps a, a slightly early call off there? Yeah, I think it, it, I think it may have been. They were... Oglethorpe was definitely on, still on first pass, did not uh, gain their first um, passing position. Um, Quad City could have potentially tied that game up in that jam if they kept it going and scored those last remaining points. But, but sometimes it's, it's hard to, to judge when you're, when you're playing um, whether or not a, a jammer is on scoring pass or not. That's where the, the bench helps in those situations. And we have Vasiline, uh, Vasiline um, who is now out as lead jam for Smash Squad, while Waghorn struggling to find their way through um, and recycle back to the back of the pack. It's a very nice knockout from Kilmore Girls, number 111 in the Smash Squad, recycling the jammer back to the pack. Yeah, and just Derbia taking uh, Vasiline out as she tries an apex jump on turn one and recycles her back to the pack. Well, a big hit from uh, the Smash Squad jammer, I think. Yeah, they're getting called on a cut penalty uh, as uh, they hit the blocker and uh, stepped out of bounds and then came back in and unfortunately passed a few players. So it gives Wackhorn an opportunity now um, on a power jam to, to resettle the score. Uh, number 18, Just Derbia. Um, we mentioned just a, a second ago, uh, is now called to the penalty box for a clockwise block. And that's a lead change for Quad City. Quad City taking the lead on that pass, five points for Quad City, uh, Waghorn. And another pickup of five thanks to a single skate through on the inside of turn four. Vas Vaseline now back on for Smash Squad. And, and it's interesting watching both teams. Vaseline taking an easy line past Mac Attack. Um, and picks up four. Yeah, I've noticed both teams have uh, really good, strong formations, but their positioning on the track and their formations is, is sometimes a little bit off. Oh, I think that was a pretty heavy back block from Black 1-8. Unfortunately, uh, that, is a, that is a back block. She disagrees, but I, I, that's, that was called by, I think, four referees. And we've had a star pass. Sam Squatch now jamming for Quad City as the jam comes to an end. And Smash Squad picking up unbelievably almost uh, with Quad City almost dominating that jam. Smash Squad picking up an equal number of points. So Smash Squad retaining the lead by four. Yeah, when there's when there's a multiple when the, when a jammer gets lead and then takes a penalty, the the amount of points scored by both teams always increases and is a dramatic score, just like it is 12 to 12. Uh, that type of score is a coach's nightmare, in my opinion, but uh, there's nothing you can do when, it, when, when that happens. And we have Slamazon, who is out as lead jam for Quad City, and I roll. Uh, I roll taking 
Arnold looks to be an incredibly confident skater. She does it. It was a very smart call off from number four of Quad City. That's Slamazon. Uh, did get lead, unfortunately. Uh, I roll past her in position on the track, and it was promptly shut down by Slamazon just to keep the score 0 0 in that. Uh, just to remind you, Smash Squad starting with a player advantage as uh, Just Debia is still serving a penalty from two jams back. Oh, nice offense from Smash Squad's pivot, trying to do some offense at the start, and it does work for them. Number 800 for the Smash Squad, that's Quiche gaining lead jam. Uh, Messica is jamming for Quad City and is really struggling, but a nice powerful hit. Uh, against Smash Squad's pivot, um, but Smash Squad's pivot flashbang giving as good as she got. Yeah, that was an easy four and the door for Quiche. Picking up points, bringing the score to 30 to 22. There's still 12 minutes left on this clock and this game is extremely close. Quad City is doing really well, holding it together against the Smash Squad from Montre Montreal Roller Derby. Smash Wad has always brought a very strong team to this tournament since its inauguration. Um, Quad City, an amalgamation of four teams, like you said, may have difficulty uh, playing together because they likely haven't practiced much together. But a forearm penalty, number 372, that's Oglethorpe. Oglethorpe. So that's the second time Oglethorpe's picked up a penalty in the very first seconds of the jam. And a multiplayer block uh, being called to a knock on wood. So um, this jam is almost definitely in Quad City's favor right now as Bone Machine is jamming. Let's see what she can do with um, a power jam. So it really does feel like you were mentioning Smash Squad's uh, Smash Squad squad is hugely confident coming in uh, and they look to be really good skaters uh, uh, and be a really strong team. Uh, is that something to do with the fact that they're in Montreal and with the amount of coaching that they have? Yeah, I think there is something to be said. Uh, uh, coming from one of the larger leagues in Canada, um, I think it's, it, it also helps f numbers wise. They, I'm sure they get a lot of fresh meat players. And there are a few other teams in this tournament that have quite large leagues. Buffalo, so Queen City, very, very large league. Uh, Royal City, surprisingly, uh, the, the the second largest league in Ontario, uh, and I, I don't know the n exact numbers, but they're they're up in the top five in Canada. Uh, Toronto, obviously, a very large league. I think they're the, the biggest one in Canada. So those leagues generally have a strong showing at these tournaments. I think because they have a little bit of an advantage of getting a lot of uh, new players every year. Uh, and then the training is there as well, because Montreal clearly has some very talented skaters in their league that train other leagues all over the world. So. I'm sure that helps them a great deal. Uh, it's Vaseline against Waghorn. Uh, uh, this is the second time we've seen this jammer pairing. Although Vaseline seems to have the advantage of being able to sneak through the pack, I think Waghorn has the speed advantage. And using that speed advantage to uh, try and nail an inside pass on the uh, Smash Squad uh, tripod, but not quite making it stick. Uh, Quad City really laying on the hits in the front of that pack. Knocking the Quad City Jammer down, or the Smash Squad Jammer down a number of times. And it looks as though we have, um, we have a penalty switch. Yeah, small pack advantage for Quad City, uh, up four blockers of three. Um, it looks like the pivot is thinking about doing some offense for the team, which is likely what they should do. Oh no, but they decided to switch to the defense. I roll with Lee Jammer. Slam is on, quickly out behind. Yeah, Quad City desperately trying to keep I roll behind them. I think they sense that I roll could very well be uh, a, a, a high scoring jammer once they get some once you get some clear space. Another smart call off from the Smash Squad. Uh, another thing that helps being from uh, a league that's been well established is uh, bench staff are generally a little bit more knowledgeable on what needs to happen in a game and, and give a little bit more information to their jammers during jams. Um, 
That isn't always true, but it definitely helps when you have an abundance of coaches and trainers like I'm sure Montreal has in their league. And it's Quiche out as lead jammer for Smash Squad once again as uh, Messica is really was held back by Smash Squad's uh, defense, it, despite being a, a blocker down, really making themselves felt. Yeah, number uh, 419 had a really nice offensive block to spring their jammer as Sam Squanch. Um, pushing the blocker off the line, letting the jammer get by. And again, just Derbia making life really troublesome for the, uh, for the Smash Squad jammers. This is certainly a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so just to remind you, the winner of this game is going to go ahead and play. Do, 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 check the list. Somebody. Uh, they're going to go ahead and play Nemesis in a game at 240. <laughs> Nemesis haven't beaten Thicket in the 11 o'clock game. One of the Smash Bob Smash Squad players being called on a multiplayer block. This number one five. Uh, gives Bow Machine an opportunity to pick up Lee Jam with Vaseline not far behind now. Yeah, a little bit of a late call off. Let's see if the points are given. Uh, they are two, the three points given given to the Smash Squad there. Yeah, Quad City not picking up. Again, it was a. Again, I think that might be due to the inexperience, but I've seen more experienced jammers as they fall and call off the block, knowing, uh, call off the jam, knowing that the, the other jam is right behind them. Yeah, uh, jammer awareness is, is something that takes a little bit to train into some people sometimes, but generally speaking, yeah, if you get knocked down as a jammer in the situation that we're seeing right now where you have lead and a jammer is right behind you, you probably want to hit it and quit it, as they say. Uh, so hit the pack, get some points, call it off as quick as possible. That's a lovely image. Uh, and as if to demonstrate, Wycorn calls off the jam just before Iroll manages to hit uh, a scoring pass on any blockers. So uh, Quad City just picking up a single point on that one. And Wycorn really showing the, the strength and acceleration that they have coming off the line. Yeah, Quad City picking up one point there. There is a blocker in the box for Montreal. I, I think there should be two points given to Quad City. Just because that's how the scoring rules work. I, I just hope that someone notices and, um, and corrects the situation. So we have around about five and a half minutes left to play with a 10 point differential. Quad City trailing by 10 against Montreal Smash Quad. Um, we have a team timeout called by Smash Squad, so just taking some time to talk tactics, talk danger players. Yeah, it's a good timeout. The Smash Squad generally in years past have come to this tournament and cleaned up the competition uh, and then only had trouble some years in the later rounds, so maybe they're just making sure that they hold their slim 10 point lead going for the rest of this uh, 5 minute and 30 second ja uh, game. Yeah, unfortunately, no one picked up the box point. Um, that's, sometimes that happens. So we have Ginger Jacks as floating pivot in for Quad City. And Slammerson making it through on the skates, but being called for a track cut as she was blocked uh, and put a couple of wheels out of bounds as she was trying to get through. Yeah, the jammers are skating towards us, and Slamazon just barely touched out of bounds there. Um, un unfortunately, if you're a jammer, you don't know if you went out of bounds. If you're unsure, you should probably just reset yourself and, and come behind everyone. Yeah, Smash Squad now a blocker down as Oglethorpe being Oglethorpe, sorry, being sent out for a, a clockwise block. Vaseline now your lead jammer and is cruising. Nice defense ball from the Quad City.
And recycling Vaseline back to the back of the pack, thanks to uh, some work there from Quad City, giving the opportunity for Sam Squatch to come back and uh, complete their initial pass. Vaseline picking up five. It looks like Montreal might run these jams now just to kill the clock. It's a, it's a decent strategy. It just, I hope it works out for them. And Slamazin staying right on the right-hand skate on the very edge of turn one. That was a beautiful line. Oglethorpe making very short work of that pack and so picking up another score of five. Big hit from Slamazon coming into the pack. Very strong, clean hit. So Smash Squad now 20 points up with just under four minutes left to play. Yeah, running long when you have the lead. Uh, it's definitely a strategy that works in these short games because the, the quicker you can run that 20 minute time down, the, the sooner you can win. So if you have confidence in your jammer to get lead and hold lead and not take a penalty, then absolutely run that jam long. As we have Quiche, uh, one of the highest scoring Smash Squad jammers out against Messica. Messica blocks out on the inside by flashbang, uh, and so recycled to the back of the pack, giving Keish an opportunity to come round for her scoring pass. And score she does, picking up a grand slam, making it look very, very easy. I'm really impressed by the, uh, the, the Quad City defense. They're really, really making life hard for these jammers. Um, just Erbia being sent to the penalty box for a forearm block and, and Messica being sent to the penalty box for a track cut. So this is now putting this jam well into the hands of Smash Squad. Yeah, this, that might have been the nail in the coffin for the Quad City Hot Rods. Unfortunately, it might be a little bit too difficult to make this differential up with at the end of this jam, which will be less than two minutes left. And if you smash squad at this point, you're going to run the jam right to the right to the final whistle, aren't you? Absolutely, uh, I definitely would. Just this 35 point difference now a 30 or a 40 point difference. Uh, you might as well just run run this clock down. I, I would run the next jam down as well myself if I had a confident jammer, knowing that they won't go to the box. As uh, Quad City now back up to full strength. Uh, Keish with a, a Keish late blocked out by. Sorry, couldn't see the name from this distance. And as we enter the dying seconds of this jam, uh, Smash Squad putting up an absolutely massive 25 point jam to the Quad City Hot Rods 4. With 41 points between them and 130 left on the game clock, this game is all but Montreal's now. Yeah, this is a score that the Smash Squad's a little more used to. Uh, I think deciding to run the jams long definitely helped them out. Sometimes teams don't practice that enough uh, at their practices at home. And uh, un unfortunately, you need to practice as many things as you can before you get to a tournament like this because all other teams are trying to um, use all the strategies they can to win these games. So I roll out for uh, Lee Jammer very, very quickly from the first whistle. And now starting to display some of the speed and dexterity that uh, that skating line and her skating position would have demonstrated. Uh, and calls off the jam. So we will have one more jam left in this game. Yeah, interesting call off there. I, I just would have run the jam again. There's only, after this jam starts, there'll be less than 20 seconds left. So I would have just ran it until the, the time was up and called the jam. Because there's a 45 point difference in this game. I don't know if Quad City's gonna be able to score that many points in a jam, but why give him the opportunity to try? And Waghorn has taken that opportunity. So taking a couple of steps up the inside of the back turn and now out to a lead jam. Vaseline has made it through turn two and consequently now on her scoring pass. Waghorn capitalizing on a stumble from Bom Jovi and cutting through for a pickup of four. And Quad City now rallying a defense to prevent Vaseline from scoring. 
but overextending, allowing her line up the middle to pick up four. And a last ditch, last minute block by Horny to Rink to send Waghorn back to the back of the, uh, the uh, last turn, giving Vaseline a clean attempt at picking up more points. Another four for Smash Squad. Increasing the differential in their favor. Bon Jovi uh, sent to the penalty box for something or other, allowing Waghorn an opportunity now to pick up another four. Vaseline recycled back to turn four almost. El Destructo now sent for a penalty. It really is all out. Yeah, a large, a large no pack happening there. Uh, destruction given to Quad City for skating backwards and, and creating a no pack on purpose, unfortunately. And that squeeze now in the penalty box as we have um, Bon Jovi coming back with five seconds left on the jam clock. Number five, one, one, two, call on a cut track on the outside of the pack. That was all or nothing. So we have an unofficial final score of 96 for the Smash Squad against 47 for the Quad City Hot Rod. So, oh, they just added a few more points. So 101 for the Smash Squad, 47 for Quad City. A uh, pretty decisive win for the Smash Squad. Uh, both these teams look like they are ready to do well in this tournament. Quad City unfortunately hitting the Smash Squad a little bit uh, too early. Um, hopefully they can recover for the rest of the day. So um, Quad City now going on to face the losers of uh, game three, that's Thicket. Uh, with Smash Squad now going on to face Nemesis in just over, uh, just under an hour's time. Uh, the next game coming to you on the stream from Ted Reeve Arena here in uh, the GTA will be uh, the Vipers against Queen's Court. And you guessed it, folks. It's Token and Rex with you all the way through that game, too. We shall see you in just a few.